Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be teaching you five forces out of 100. This is part three, and if you missed part one and two, I'm putting these all in a playlist and you can check the links down below. Let's get into it. All right, so here is the first control. Now, this one is sort of one I came up with. Uh, I didn't invent it. I just put moves together and uh, made this force, right? So it, it's sort of like the Hindu force meets a switch by Bruce Servan, right? So here's what we're going to do. Um, the force card, like, like I said, is the seven of spades. And uh, we can give it a Hindu shuffle like this. They can stay stop anywhere. Maybe they say stop uh, right here, all right? So I would ask them to hold their hand like this, and I'd put their card right in their hand. And of course, they have the seven of spades. All right, so this force uh, works on two levels. Uh, one is it's just a regular Hindu force, all right? So we all know the Hindu force. The four of spades is the force card. You start the Hindu shuffle. They say stop anywhere. Show them the card, and that's a great force. I use it all the time. You know, it flies by. It, it's a it's a good force to use. However, if you want to be a little bit more sneaky, uh, what you can do is yeah, the force card is two of spades. Do the regular Hindu. They say stop anywhere. Now, for a little bit of a time delay, just like the crosscut force, uh, reasonable the packets so you're like this, all right? So you're holding the deck in, in the dealer's position, but you have the packet that you, that the unshuffled packet on top. The force card, of course, is the bottom card of that packet. You're in this position. Now for some uh, psychological misdirection, uh, you ask them, you just you just stop, you say, hey, look them right in the eye and say, please hold out your hand like this, all right? So what this is supposed to simulate is taking this packet off and putting that card into their hand, all right? So you're like this, and what you're gonna do is as soon as they hold up their hand, uh, they'll be looking at their hand, all right? So once they do that, you just slide that bottom card off with your fingers like this, just like that so that looks like maybe it was that card but if they do see it if they do see that it came up from the bottom it's still a good for us anyway and the reason why it works is because of that time delay with the cross cut force um you know psychology so either way if they see see it coming from the bottom it still works if they think that it might may come from right there it, it works too so either way you're covered and so it's just a little bit more um i don't know just an extra level to the hindu force i think all right so all right so once again it's, it's on the bottom of the deck they say stop anywhere all right raise some of the deck so it's like this and you ask them look at them ask them to hold their hands so they do and then it's good if you sort of turn your hand like this or the back of your hand is uh is what they're seeing all right so you like this and then thumb, thumb that off to their hand and that's the force however if you, if you don't like the hindu force you can just do swing cuts all right so on the bottom do swing cuts they say stop any time right there you're already in that position all right there it is the force card all right so this next one is the optical force and it was put together by carl fulvis and jack avis all right so in this case the force card will be the two of diamonds and this is what it looks like. So we can dribble a deck like this and have them say stop anytime. All right. So once they do, uh, maybe right there, we just take the card they stopped on and it's the force the two of diamonds. All right. So man, I love this force. Um, so again, our force cards on the bottom of the deck and you can do a shuffle and keep it there with the slip shuffle. All you do is keep your fingers on the deck as you do a shuffle like this to keep it on the bottom. Now, uh, you're going to dribble the deck and have them say stop at any time. But you want to do it to where uh, they get a good view of the side of the deck uh, during the dribble, but don't flash the bottom card prematurely, obviously. So you want to sort of turn your body to the, to the you, you would do it to the right, but I would do it to the left because I'm left-handed anyway. And start, uh, start to dribble the deck like this so they can get a good view of that. Now, the reason why you're doing this is because you want them to get a good view of this uh, position to where you can they can clearly see the card they stopped on because in a minute you're going to turn back around and apparently take that card like this, but you're going to switch it instead. So that's why this position is important because you want them to see this configuration of the deck to where this upper packet is sort of tilted like this. So you can just go in there and take that card apparently, all right? But that's what they think that that's happens, all right? So what really happens is this, you just take the bottom card, all right? So this is exposed to you, you just reach in there as if you're gonna take the card with your finger like this, but you just take your thumb and take the bottom card instead, but you want to go in there like you're going to take it. So it won't work like this. All right. So you, if your finger is up here, 
it won't work. Your finger has to go in there and then act like you're going to take it. But this is what happens. So you go in there like a, like a crab, like a pincher, and then don't do anything with this finger because if, if you pull out and your finger's on the card, you might take two cards. So just keep your fingernail on the bottom of this upper packet, all right? So take your thumb and grab the bottom card as you close the deck like this. So it's sort of like a reverse tilt from the bottom in reverse, <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, so once again, you dribble the deck and then they say stop here, tilt the packet like this. So, you know, they're like, they're, like there's a mouth uh, there, turn over so they can't see that. Reach in as if you're going to take the card with your index finger. Don't actually touch the card because you might actually take it on accident, all right? So the thumb goes under, takes the bottom card as you close the deck like this. Now, when you do that, you want to be quick with it, all right? So if you do it slow, it might be seen. So once again, boom, you're here. And then act like you're going to reach in and take the card out. Look how good that looks. That's the bottom card. So just do it uh, quickly and they won't see a thing. All right, so once again, take the card out and that really looks like it's the card that came from the middle. It's crazy. That's why it's called the optical force. Hope you like it. All right, so this next force is my take on the psychological cut force. I think it was by actually um, Hofzinger. I might be wrong, don't quote me on it, all right? So um, it's dependent on timing where you have a break in the middle and you're cutting packets and you cut right to the break when they say stop. However, uh, sometimes it doesn't hit and uh, I came up with this so you can hit it every time. All right, so uh, you're cutting packets, they say stop maybe right here. And again, the force card is a two of diamonds. They cut right to it. All right, so what you're gonna do is have the force card, the two of diamonds on top of the deck, and then you wanna um, you wanna position this card maybe a third uh, from the bottom of the deck and get a break above it. A simple way to do that is start a overhand shovel, shop, chop off a block, maybe about a third of the deck, and then run one card on top of that and shuffle off normally. All right, all you gotta do now is uh, lift up at the jog and get a break um, on top of that card there, which is the two of diamonds. Now, uh, here, what's going to happen is you actually want to do the timing for us, and if it works, it works. However, if it doesn't, uh, here's what you do. Let me preface this by saying that all you're doing here is you're cutting small packets, and you're going to do cut one, and then you're going to say, look, as I cut packets like this, just say stop any time, so you cut another one, and then after you get done talking, you cut one more packet, and right here is the two of diamonds. So if they say stop, uh, if they haven't said stop yet, uh, cut one more packet. And if they say stop right here, you've nailed it. All right. So once again, you're here, start cutting packets like this. This is performance uh, mode. So I look at packets like this, just say stop anytime. Stop right there. The force card is right there. All right. If they haven't said stop yet, cut another one and they'll say stop right here and the force cards on top of the lower packet, all right? So, however, if none of those things work the first time, here's what you can do. So once again, you chop off a block about a third of the deck, run one card, shuffle off normally, uh, lift up at the end jog, that way you get a break right above that two of diamonds, but uh, two, thir two, uh, two thirds of the way down, and then you're gonna start cutting packets, small ones, right? and you say, ask them to say stop anytime. They say stop right here, and you still have a break. What do you do? First rule is play, play it casually, act cool, right? Never panic, all right? Never be like, uh, you know, you wanna act like everything is supposed to happen this way. So what happens here is you're going to do the old uh, dummy pass or the display cut or the Tommy Tucker pass. And what that is, is you say, look, you could have said stop anywhere. And now all you're gonna do here is take uh, this packet and Bill grip, maintaining the thumb, or maintaining the break with your thumb. Let's start the display cut, which is this. Uh, you could have said stop anywhere, maybe here on the queen, uh, on the queen there with the five, but you said stop right here, which is the two diamonds. Now all I'm doing there is showing them cards they could have had with a with a pass. All right, so just do a classic pass like this. This is exposed view. I mean, it was already exposed view because you saw it. <laughs> but anyway, you just take the bottom packet and you show that first, all right? As if it was this top packet, like this. You could have had the Joker and then you just put some cards off like this. You could have had the three, you could have had the 10, but you just stopped right here on the two of diamonds. So this is also a good way to actually practice the, the actual, you know, psychological packet force, you know, and if it doesn't hit, you can go right into the 
the display pass, all right? So do me a favor as I cut, you know, do me a favor as I cut packets like this, say stop any time, stop right there, perfect. Your card is the two of diamonds. I have one card left, the two. Hey, a miracle. So if you're not that lucky, and if you want to keep it 100% surefire every time, just cut very small packets, all right? So, all right, just do me a favor, say stop any time. Stop right there. Uh, you could have had any card. You could have had the four, uh, the queen, any card, but you stopped directly at the two of diamonds. What a miracle. I don't know how you did that. All right, so this next one is a personal favorite of mine. It comes from Marlo, and he calls it the Open Hockley Force. I don't know why he calls it that. I don't know what Hockley means. He was a weird guy, all right? So here's what it looks like. So what we'll do is just to keep things consistent, we'll go with the two of diamonds again as our force chart, all right? So and what we'll do is we'll start uh, filming over cards like this, and we'll just have them say stop anytime they want to, all right? So maybe they say stop right around the sweet spot uh, right here, all right? So we take that card off, and it's the two of diamonds. All right, so once again, our two of diamonds, our force card, we'll go right on the rock bottom, right there, all right? So what we're gonna do is, you can cut a small packet at first, just to, you know, so it's not, you know, just a little bit of cards, kind of looks weird, all right? So I like to do a small packet first, maybe, you know, 10 to 15 cards, all right? So after that, I say, look, as I thumb over cards, just say stop anytime. Now notice what I'm doing here. As I thumb them off, I'm not thumbing them off square. What I'm doing is, when I thumb it off, it's going to be a little bit side jogged and then I push it in, all right? And that'll be important here in a minute, as you'll see. All right, so I keep going like this. I say, as I do this, just say stop anytime. Now, once they say stop, it's going to look like I come over and take that next card off. What actually happens is you guessed it, we'll take the bottom card off. It's gonna look just like we just took that card off. All right, so what we're gonna do is scrape, this is exposed view. We're gonna scrape our thumb across that top card, but in the process, take our fingers and drag that bottom card off in the same time, all right? So it's gonna be, it's gonna look like this, just like that. Now notice, no matter what I do, I can't get that card square anyway, and it's going to be side jogged, which looks exactly like the other ones did in that side jogged position. So it's, uh, it just looks as it should. So from this side, you're doing this and keeping those cards in those side jogged positions like this. And then once they say stop, this is slow motion. You're going to come through and then sort of tilt this hand up, all right, just like this. So the top of this packet is sort of hidden from view, all right. So you do this. And you take your thumb as if it's going to take that card like this. That's very important. You want to actually act like going to take the top card because if you just left your thumb there and did this, it's not going to look very good. All right. So you want to actually mimic taking that top card off. But what, of course, what happens, you take the bottom card off uh, just like this. And since it's side jog like this, you can't help it from being like this. It looks just like those other ones did right there in the position. So here's another exposed view that two of diamonds is on the bottom. All right, so you cut a small packet at first. You don't have to, I, that's just my thing. If you wanna do singles the whole time, uh, totally all right. I just like to do the small packet first. It feels better in my hands, all right? So uh, as I do this, just say stop anytime. By the way, this is exposed view. You're doing this, all right? And those side jobs are important. They say stop right here. This is exposed view. I've said that like three times. <laughs> You get it by now. All right, that thumb pretends like it's gonna take that top card like this, but really it takes a bottom card like this. Boom, you have your force card. Here it is once more um, in full speed. All right, so once again, two diamonds. Uh, as I do this, just say stop anytime. Anytime you want to just say stop on any card. Uh, anytime you want, just say stop <laughs> right here. All right, so there it is, the two of diamonds. I did that kind of on purpose because this is a good force to use for the spectators who are kind of, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, assholes where they want to try to mess you up. So this is a good one to use, you know, say stop anytime and you're like doing 40 cards until the say stop. This is a good one to use for them. So yeah, hope you like it and uh, have fun with it. All right, so this next one is a variation on the, on the classic uh, Ruffle Force. And uh, it looks like this, all right? So we riffle down like a just sustained riffle force. And uh, just to keep things consistent, we'll use the two diamonds again, all right? So they say stop any time. You can lift off where, exactly where this says stop, and then we have your card uh, right there, two diamonds. So the name of this is called bottom out, and uh, this is what it is. So you wanna get a break, a thumb break on the bottom card like this, all right? So you have a break, um, a thumb break on the bottom card, just like this, ready to go. 
So what happens is, just like a riffle for us, you riffle your thumb down and they say stop anywhere. And the good thing about this is you actually do it where they say stop, you split the deck exactly where they actually says stop, unlike the actual riffle forcer, right? So you're doing this to say stop, you can lift up right there, maintaining the thumb break as you swing that over. So you're like this at this point, maintaining that thumb break as you swing it over. Now, as soon as you do that, you wanna separate both hands like this, both hands sort of dip down like this, all right? So when you do that, all you're gonna do is right about here, you're going to just drop that card from thumb break right here. So they can't really distinguish where that card came from. It could've came from here, 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 anywhere. And then it doesn't matter where they think it came from. All they know is they said stop and a card dropped, all right? So that's all they need to know uh, for a card they picked, all right? So. Once again, we we have our thumb break on the bottom card. And you can do it easily with a with a uh, pinky pull down by Marlo. All, all you're going to do here for a uh, pinky pull down is take your pinky and scoot it towards the base of your thumb like this, so you get a nice bevel of the deck right here. So all you got to do now is take your pinky, and then it's very easy to sight count as many cards as you want for a pinky pull down, all right? In this case, we only need one. So we do the bevel like this. We just scoot our pinky towards our thumb, getting that bevel. So it's now it's very easy to just pull down on that bottom card like this with our pinky. Thanks, Marlo. All right, now uh, you can hold the deck in bill grip. You can still keep your pinky there if you want to as you're doing this to make things easier uh, for you. But the thumb break must be there either way, all right? So riffle down with your thumb. Uh, they say stop right here and you break the spread at that point not spread you break the deck at that point and then as you dip both hands down you just release that card from thumb break like this and then uh there it is all right guys so as always i really hope that you enjoyed this video and i really hope that you learned something new you know the only reason why i make these youtube videos in the first place is not only because i love them but also because i want to teach you guys the best things uh, in history and card magic that I can possibly find. My goal is to enrich the magic community with little nuggets of gold and inspire you to go out and perform these bits of uh, astonishment. And I just hope that you have a good time watching these videos. Until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.